Ismail Khan chooses supplies for another family in need. Hello. She is a widow with eight kids. Government resettling agencies provide direct assistance with the basics at first. The dead died in a suicide bomb. Then Afghan evacuees turned to state and local independent programs. That's when Mina Lay and Ismail Khan step in with the Afghans of Puget Sound Alliance. Lay's family of 11 arrived in the United States more than four decades ago after the end of the Vietnam War. Now, more than a generation later, she's helping Afghan families. I knew nothing about Afghanistan, um, but of course the fall of Kabul with the picture of the people being evacuated through airplanes, it was exactly the scene in 1975. Then we'll work with them. So she has firsthand experience when counseling people like Isra Mashwani, who is supporting his family with a minimum wage job at Taylor Farms. I was with the special forces in Afghanistan. I moved here, and now I'm cutting vegetables. To move beyond these entry-level jobs, the Alliance enrolls Afghans in English classes. Transfer here. Then toward certifications in the skills they brought from Afghanistan. They work with local merchants, like Syed Basmala Razavi, who has hired former Afghan brigade commanders and intelligence officers to stack his shelves. We train them that, hey, you have to come on time, yeah, you will have three breaks. <laughs> 3,000 Afghan refugees now live in Washington state. Many admitted under a law permitting humanitarian parole status, but they don't qualify for permanent residency, leaving their future in limbo. Congressional legislation that could help them is stalled. If they don't pass that in a year or so, you will see many will be homeless. The Alliance also helps get Afghan children into school, but language barriers are steep. Like when a 13-year-old walked to his school two days in a row, wondering why the classrooms were empty. The students were on break. Remember the widow? None of her eight children up to the age of 16 ever attended school in Afghanistan. They can't read. Just days after these supplies were delivered, they walked into a U.S. classroom for the very first time. Carolyn Persuti, VOA News, Seattle, Washington.